Zmešalo se zlobě. Mikola Chichenko and his wife Ludmila have watched the invasion and the liberation of Kherson city from their sixth floor balcony. They saw it all from here: the Russian withdrawal across the Dnieper, the destruction of the Antonivsky Bridge. But it was what they heard from here that will stay with them the longest. Their apartment overlooks one of the places where the Russians detained and tortured people. At night, they would struggle to tune out the sounds of the screaming from next door. The soldiers we were with hadn't been here before so went into combat mode as they approached the entrance. With hundreds of Russian soldiers still in the city and official buildings mined, they were taking no chances. All day long, we could hear demining teams detonating explosives that the Russians had planted around the city. Also left behind evidence of destruction and looting. The Russian Z symbol painted on the door, and if you look inside, there's graffiti that reads, Zelensky, we're coming. But if we move to the next garage, it looks like this is what was looted by the Russians from people's homes. We have washing machines, toilets, air conditioning units. Don't step on the parohi. When it was deemed safe for us, we followed a soldier, whose call name was Anton, down some steps and inside. So Anton is just pointing out a few things about this room. The chairs are screwed onto the floor, and you can see they've used tape, obviously, to tape up people's ankles to the chair. Here's why the chairs may have been secured. This device is a wind-up generator for charging old Soviet army field phones, here used to electrocute detainees. When you're standing in a room like this and you think about what happened to your fellow Ukrainians in a room like this, how do you feel? Fury. 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 Обычный армейский телефон ТА-57, его по звуку знаю, я в армии служил, называется ТА-57. When the Russians took over Kherson, they obtained a list of former military men. Vladimir Safanov's name was on that list. He was held and tortured in the facility for two months. One of the men in the screwed-down chair. Армейский, да, телефонный аппарат, и он перероблений для для тортур две клипсы, які одягають на уші. То мені одягали на уші. Знаю, що хлопцям, які були у мене в камері, помоложе хлопці одягали ці клипси не тільки на уші, а й на другі частини тіла. На які? Хлопцям одягали і на соски, і на машонку. Володимир was part of the underground partisan movement in Kherson. But there was another category of prisoner, the parents of serving soldiers. People like Vitaly Serdyuk. His son was away fighting, so they took Vitaly in his place and tortured him as though he was the younger man. Снимай шорты, снимай шорты. Подключаешь два электрода к яйцам, подключают. И динамой машины крутят. Волосы поднимаются дыбом. Все, все тело. Отпускаю. 
потихонечку крутит, оно у тебя весь все это самое, ды 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 потом опять добавляют, потом опять отпускают. As well as these two men, we've spoken to the families of other people who were inside the facility but have gone missing. According to the testimony we've gathered, a large number of prisoners were taken by the retreating Russian army to occupied areas. We don't know what's happened to them. We do know what happened to two other prisoners, though. Because back on the sixth floor balcony, unbeknownst to the Russians, Ludmilla and Mikola were watching. And one evening, this is what they saw. Ну, выносили, я видел, это... выносили в одеяло. Да, и я выносил, и я видела. Да, выносили два да. одеяла. Мусор. Кинули мусор туда. Да, да. А потом на второй день проехала машина бортовая. Все это загрузило и вывезло. Nothing can fully heal what was inflicted on the people of Kherson city. They saw, heard and felt terrible things. But now they're free to testify to those things. And that counts for something.